I'm going to take a look at uh, problem 6.25. And in this problem, they have a change in internal energy is represented by this defined equation. Okay, Basically, it's the mass times the specific heat times the delta T, or the change in temperatures. Okay, So for this particular problem, um, we're given a mass, 2 kilograms. We have an initial temperature, which is the T1, and we're given the specific heat of air, okay? which basically is how much energy does it take to lift or to increase um, a given substance, in this case a kilogram of the substance, a degree C. Okay. Okay. So if you're looking, you know, from this specific equation, it's like we are given, in this case, um, the change in internal energy, right? How do we come up with a change in internal energy? Well, we use the uh, first law of thermodynamics. Um, all energy is only, uh, all energy in a system is going to be remain constant. So it's like whatever uh, energy can't be created or destroyed. So whatever energy, um, you have like on the left hand side of your equation, you have to account for it on the right hand side of the equation, okay? Because it doesn't get lost. It's converted from one form to another. Okay, so we're given information on the rate of heat transfer, okay, from the tank, okay? So heat's leaving the tank, and we're doing work on the system or doing work on the air, okay? So we have something that's leaving, energy that's leaving, and we have work essentially that's coming in. So what we're going to find is, of course, the change in energy has got to be the difference between these two. Now, you'll notice this when we're talking about the rate of heat transfer. They're giving you units of joules per unit time, right, which is a watt, right? Well, what we need to do is multiply this times the time in the appropriate units to give us the total energy within the total heat that's lost within those within the 10 minutes. Okay, so that's what we need to do. All right, so it's a good idea, you know, when you look at problems like this is to think about like in general, kind of what's your approach going to be based on what information's given, right? Okay, so that's probably a pretty good overview of kind of how we're going to go about this and what we recognize is we need to, you know, re rearrange this equation, of course. We need to rearrange this equation because T2 is really what we're looking for, okay? So there are a few steps for us to follow. Okay, continuing on with uh, 6.25. So we're looking to find that temperature, that final temperature of the air in the system. Okay, so first thing, some of the given quantities, we have a uh, mass of air, which is two kilograms. That's the initial mass. Of course, we don't change we're not changing mass, so mass is not changing, so we'll have this throughout. Um, the next thing is we're not exchanging mass with the outside or across the boundary because it's a closed system. Um, the next thing is the time, right? How much time's gone by? 10 minutes, which is 600 seconds. So I just wrote it in seconds um, because our units are going to be in terms of, uh, you know, they're joules per second, but seconds are going to be in our equation, not minutes. Uh, the next thing I have is the rate at which heat is leaving the system which was 1.3 kilowatts or i wrote it a couple different a couple different ways i wrote it these other ways just later on maybe we'll see if we want to use it um when we actually write the equation which is 1300 watts or 1.3 times uh 1.3 k joules per second okay the next thing is how much work is being done on the system okay and in this case, it was 500 kilojoules was defined. All right. And it, that much work over 600 seconds. And I also wrote it in terms of work in over work out, which was 833 watts, right, over delta T. May or may not need this. Okay, the next thing is we have a specific heat of air, which is 0.718 kilojoules per kilogram degree C. And then we have our initial temperature, okay? So this is all what's everything that's given. Um, you know, as you go through and, and like I said, the, you know, my general approach is, you know, find 
what are you looking for, whatever is given, and then whatever governing equations are. And it might be that as you go through it, you may need to update any of these. You may need to change them or put additions in there, right? But it gives you kind of a general starting point, which is good. Uh, at least I think this is pretty good. You may, or, you may or may not follow this exact process, but it's the general idea. So here's our thermodynamic process equation. This is what was given. And the other part that we're going to find is we're going to need this equation also because we need to have uh, delta. We need to find this uh, delta U or change in internal energy, right? So basically for a closed system, uh, first law of thermodynamics, basically it's whatever's in minus the heat. This is heat. This is work over here. Heat in minus heat out plus work in minus work out is the change in internal energy, okay? So the approach I took first was to take this equation here, this thermodynamic process equation, and rewrite it. So when you rewrite the equation, basically, I just divide both sides by mc, the mass times the specific heat, comes up to be, uh, you know, Delta U over MC equals T2 minus T1. Then I add T1 to both sides. And now I now have T2 separate by itself, okay? So the next step, what I did is just, I want to substitute in for these, for these symbols, right? Or variables. And what we recognize right off the bat is, oh yeah, we weren't given Delta U. So we have to calculate that. We were given M, we were given C, we were given the temperature, initial, yeah, initial temperature. So we need to calculate this first, delta U. Okay. So delta U, um, for a closed system, what we found was that there's no heat coming in and there's no work being done out from the system. So all we have is our heat that's leaving plus whatever work is being done brought in. Okay. Well, to determine the heat that's leaving, it's actually going to be the rate times the time. All right. So now multiplying the rate at which heat's coming in times the time gives you the total amount of heat energy that um, is leaving the system. Okay, so now what we do is substitute in for those values and you get minus 780 kjoules minus because it's leaving plus 500 kjoules. So what we recognize right off the bat that the internal energy has, we also lost internal energy, right? So we've also used some of the internal energy or the, um, the internal, internal energy of the system to produce a work output, okay? So it's a negative 280 kilojoules. Okay, so all we do is now we have value for delta U, our change in internal energy is minus 280 kilojoules over M times C. And, you know, make sure you have it in the right unit. So what you're going to find is, you know, kilojoules cancel out. Kilograms cancel out. And then what you're left with is one over, you know, one over, or, or uh, this is unit list at the top, over one over, you know, um, degree C. So multiply it to both the numerator and denominator times degree C. This one cancels out in the, in the numerator. I'm sorry, in the denominator. And the numerator now has degree C. Okay. So we just perform the math calculation. We come up with 105 degrees C. And that is it which makes sense in this case because we know we needed to use some of that energy to uh of the internal energy to actually do work okay so it's at a lower temperature less thermal energy in internal energy 